Welcome to part two of episode number two of the After Effects to DaVinci Resolve series. Now, if you haven't watched the first part, make sure to do so because we're using that as a starting point for this video. Okay, so we are going to hold Alt and then copy this Fusion composition and we're gonna right click and then open in Fusion. Now that we have this other Fusion composition here ready, what we wanna do is we are actually just gonna get rid of this polygon and the drop shadow for now because we're not gonna use that at first. And we're going to go to the transform node where it says has that. And we're actually going to take out the angle of these. Now we're going to check out our ellipse. We have no keyframes here, but we're going to be animating the width and the height so that there is sort of like a bouncing motion. We can also take out the pad that we have. So we are basically back at the starting point. But if you don't have these, make sure to check out the first video so that you can see how we built this part. Now, what we want to do here is have the ball dropping from off the screen and then bounce right here like this. Now that we have here, the first thing that we want to do is we want to create a keyframe for the center position. And we're going to create another one here at frame 10. And that will be the first movement that we will have. Now here, we're going to bring our ball with the Y values and make it go off our screen right here and now we can see the ball dropping there now after it drops also we want it to bounce so we we're gonna have to go a few frames forward you and taking into account this video which was in after effects now here we have the the first bounce now after every bounce it will go up and down and the duration of this will be shorter if we take into account gravity right so we're going to go instead of 10 frames for these, we're going to go actually five frames, bring these up. And then again, five frames, we're going to bring these down to 0.5, which is the bouncing point. Then again, we're going to go now to four frames. So 24, bring these around halfway there and then four more. And if you want, if you, if there's a lot more frames, you can actually just go and plus the number of frames right here. And then in this one, we're going to also bring it back to 0.5. And then one last one, which is going to be just three frames. And we're going to make it bounce again at around, around halfway there. And then again, we're going to bring this back to zero after three frames. You can also do two frames if you want. Oops, not zero, but 0.5. Okay, now if you look at these, it looks rather, it looks a bit stiff, right? First of all. Now there's one thing that we can do to fix this. First, we can actually just go to the spline and play around with the curve that we have. If we press S, it looks like that. And if we press F, now the main difference from pressing S and F is that if we press S, the curve is a bit more continuous. And if we press F, it will sort of like stay up there for one more like like a little bit of time so it looks a little bit more like a realistic bounce so in this case we're gonna use f to smooth the, smooth things in and out but now it doesn't look that great yet right there's still a few things that we can play around with now i want to fix that first drop because it's a little bit too slow so in that case what we're gonna do is we're not gonna use the f that is by like that by default but what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this keyframe holding control and make it sort of like a curve of it going just down up like that. So it starts a little bit, bit slower and then it speeds up with when it's gonna, it's about to touch the floor. Now that we have that ready, we have to look at the ball and how it will react if it was a real ball. Holding control, I wanna see the keyframes of the transform node. So now it's gonna be both of them selected. That way we can actually calculate better the movement that we're gonna have. Now in this case, what we're gonna have is the ball, first of all, when it's dropping or jumping, we want it to get sort of like a little bit thinner like that. And then as it gets to the floor, it will be um, flatter. I guess the impact of the floor will have an effect on the ball. So we're going to start with the zero ball here at zero, right around frame six is going to become a little bit thinner. And then right when it touches the ground, we're going to set the key from right here for these and for the height. And now we're going to, it's a little bit of uh, time consuming, but we're going to go one frame backwards, create two keyframes, and then again here, create two keyframes for these. 
Now in this first keyframe, we're gonna leave this normal. We're gonna make the ball a little bit thicker again. So we're gonna bring it to 0.15. And we're gonna decrease this, the height of it a little bit. Like that. So now it looks like the ball drops and it has an impact with the floor and then it jumps back up. As it jumps back up, we want to actually get rid of this second keyframe. I forgot, I mixed it up. We have these, we're gonna go instead of one frame right away, we're gonna go like two or three frames and make it go the default size again. And then the ball will be a little bit thinner again so that it has that, whoops, movement like that. As the ball gets to the 15th point, we want the ball to be completely normal, so completely circular. So we're gonna put the default uh, values again here. And then here around halfway there, we wanna bring these down again a little bit, but it doesn't have to be the same value, but you can if you want. The idea is that everything will be smaller every time so because the impact in the force decreases actually, right, as time goes on. So it could be like 0.135, for example. It will be really minimal, but it's just like if you want to. It does, it's barely noticeable. Now here again, the ball will have an impact. So we wanna create the two keyframes there. And then as the ball touches the ground, we wanna create the, we're gonna decrease the number again, and we're gonna make these go a little bit bigger like that to the side. And then around halfway there when it's going up, we wanna bring these back to the previous thickness, which was like 13 something, 0 0.13, 0 0.13.6 in this case. Actually, it's too little. We're gonna do a little bit more. And we're also gonna bring the height back to the normal 0 0.10, 0 0.15. And then when it gets to the uh, point right there, we're gonna bring these both to normal, which is 0.15. And then we're gonna repeat that process, the same process for the next bounces. And I'm actually just gonna speed up through this process right here because I'm pretty sure you don't want us, you don't want me to repeat everything just again and again and again. Okay, now that we have that on all of them, then you can see how the bounce is a little bit more realistic. It has a little bit more, it's a little bit more alive. Now, if you look at this spline tool right here, you will see all this craziness. And in this case, what we can do again is also smooth this out by pressing F if you want, and we can check out how it looks. And if you don't like that one, you can test out by selecting everything and pressing S. And it's really up to you which one you like better. Like that. We can activate the controls again so that we can see if there's anything else that we have to change. And there we have that bounce. Now you will see in the example that I showed and, and the intro, we actually have a reflection. The reason for that is that I didn't wanna have to go with the drop shadow because in this case, the bouncing, we would not be able to use that same technique. We will have to add a different background and animate it individually because the shadow will get bigger when the ball's closer to the ground. And then as it goes up, then it will get smaller. And it was a little bit tedious, but if you want to, me to do a tutorial on that, I can do that in the future too. Okay, let me show you about the mirror effect for this. We're gonna create a mirror. For that, we're gonna press Control and Spacebar, and now we can see the mirror. By default, it's gonna show the halfway, and what we can do is actually bring this all the way to 90 degrees. We can see both balls bouncing there, and now it looks a bit weird because we need to go to the ending point here and we're gonna have to decrease the height of it at, up until the point that we are they are barely touching. And then we can go here and adjust the blending so that it's a little bit more opaque and that it looks sort of like a reflection, sort of like if there's water and it's just reflecting, reflecting the, ball, the ball bouncing. That adds a little bit of a nice touch in my opinion. Now, the last thing that we wanna add in this case, it was a text. For that, we can actually just lower this transform because we want this to affect everything. And we can select this transform and then press text here and it will create that merge node automatically. And since everything is based on the 0.5, 0.5 or like the center of everything, 
then we don't have to move that. But if you move your text and make this a left anchor, then it might be affected a little bit. It might be weird. So if you wanna just leave it at the center, it will be better. Now here we can increase the size for S and you will see that it will just follow everything normally like everything else does. You, If you wanna be safe, you can actually connect these lips to the text here. But since the movement is barely any, uh, we can just leave it like that and it won't do any, it won't be moved at all. Now, the last thing that we can do here is with the transform node, make sure if you start with the first one, you will have this part ready. So the motion blur is already activated and you don't have to do that. But if you have started from scratch and build these, then you will have to activate the motion blur for these two. And the last step would be actually to go back to the edit page and then add the sound effects and sort of like sync them as the ball is touching the ground. And that is basically how you would do that bouncing animation. You can play around and adjust things. It's always up to your creativity. Now make sure to check out part three if you wanna know how to mix both things that we worked with in this episode and on the previous one. And that is it for this video and I will see you in the next video here in Suave. Bye.